beautiful once again the weather was pleasant not cold not hot just about the right temperature for us all to be enjoying hopefully going for a picnic but well probably we're going to be waiting on that till the weekend now that we are all together let us remind you that we are all awaiting for your email so please go ahead and send us your feedback both good or bad criticize us advise us on our email which is tfg underscore ksa2 at live.com i repeat it is tfg underscore ksa2 at live.com we would be more than glad to receive your feedback and our number is going to be reminded to you by the better half of the program, Mansoor. So, Salaam Alaikum and hello. Alaikum Salaam. How are you tonight? I'm very well, it's Mansoor. It's really a tremendous and a brilliant day today. It's an amazing day that uh, the weather is getting better in Riyadh. So, people are enjoying the time. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode from your favorite show, The Future Generation. Tonight, it's, the, uh, it's uh, concerned about the people who traveled around the world, traveled overseas to elevate and improve their education level. Uh, Mr. Uh, Michelle Khalid al Saman, it is such a pleasure to have you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum as -salam. Thank you very much for having me here tonight. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Michelle Salman. Thank you. Uh, it's, we are happy about your participation on the show. Uh, we would like to start the show with um, uh, the, the first experience of you. Uh, when the time that you thought of the uh, studying abroad? Uh, when did I think about studying abroad? I think I thought about it when, uh, actually, when I was in Tanuia. I, I went yes. to school here and I finished high school over here. I actually went to uh, Madar Riyadh, which is actually right over there. And um, so I think it was my final year there and I just decided at that point that I wanted to go abroad to, to study. And uh, I was going to be a doctor, actually, in the beginning. And then I decided that, no, maybe I was going to go into business. And that didn't work out because I ended up with my bachelor's degree in political science. Now, talk to us about your journey to your first destination, which was the United States of yes. America. Why did you choose the Americas? And what is it that you decided to finally, how is it that you decided to study political science from medicine to business and then political science? Right. Um, actually, um, my father also went abroad. He, was, uh, he went to the University of Oregon, which is uh, in the United States, and I followed in his footsteps. And I also went to the same university, and uh, that that was basically the reason why I chose the United States. Was my father? My father went there, and I wanted to go where my father went. And Welcome back ladies and gentlemen and well that was our news break where we were learning a little bit more about the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. However with this we are going to be moving on sticking to the format of our Monday's show which is all in regards to one of the Saudis who have traveled abroad for the sake of acquiring higher education. We have got one of the excellent examples, a person that I personally have been extremely tremendously impressed by, uh, Mr. Mishal Khalid al-Samman. It is such a pleasure to have you. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum as Thank you very much for having me here tonight. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Mishal Salman. Thank you. Uh, it's, we are happy about your participation in the show. Uh, we would like to start the show with um, uh, the, the first experience of you uh, when the time that you thought of the uh, studying abroad? Uh, when did I think about studying abroad? I think I thought about it when, uh, actually, when I was in Tanuia. I, I went yes. to school here and I finished high school over here. I actually went to uh, Madar Riyadh, which is actually right over there. And um, so I think it was my final year there and I just decided at that point that I wanted to go abroad to, to study and uh, I was going to be a doctor actually in the beginning and then I decided that no maybe I was going to go into business and that didn't work out because I ended up with my bachelor's degree in political science. Now talk to us about your journey to your first destination which was the United States of yes. America. Why did you choose the Americas and what is it that you decided to finally, how is it that you decided to study political science from medicine to business and then political science? Right. Um, actually, um, my father also went abroad. He, was, uh, he went to the University of Oregon, which is uh, in the United States, and I followed in his footsteps. 
and I also went to the same university and uh, that that was basically the reason why I chose the United States was my father my father went there and I wanted to go where my father went and because it, it's a fantastic school and um, it, it that's basically it. Now with this, uh, because Michelle, you have mentioned your father, I would actually like to send my regards, my deepest regards to Mr. Khalid al-Saman and his beautiful, wonderful wife. Hopefully both of you gentlemen and lady are watching us tonight. However, with this, Michelle, uh, with all due respect to the United States of America, you did move on to another country after acquiring your bachelor's in political science. Right. Talk to us about what was your second destination. Okay, um, after I graduated with my uh, bachelor's, during my time at the university actually, um, I was studying and doing a lot of things. I found it, it was my opportunity to learn a lot of different things while I was in America, from art and um, not only political science, but like literature, a lot of literature, a lot of international relations. What, what a genius uh, idea! It's indeed it, that's that's the thing to do when you go abroad. Instead of instead of just studying for your field, which is you you must do. I really think it really helped in shaping who I am by studying and exploring other venues and other things. Of them was, like I said, art, literature, um, international relations, international studies, other languages. Um, I was involved in uh, the International Student Association while I was over there, so I got Amazing. to meet all kinds of people from all different parts of the world, Indonesia, Japan, China, uh, Europe. So you get really involved, and while I was there, I ended up learning that I liked a lot of other things more than I did business or even computer science. And while I was studying, I was, as a hobby, doing a lot of art, digital art, and programming. So I learned programming while I was doing political science. When I graduated, I ended up getting a job as a programmer at a Japanese corporation and basically... In, in the U.S. or in, in the U.S. It's a Japanese company that was in the United States and is, I was a programmer. Is it related to games or only no, programming? It was, it, was, it was related to IT technology. Um, basically, it, it's one of Japan's big four corporations. And while I was there, I had this liking to go to Japan and I wanted to go to Japan. So being an engineer, quote unquote, with a political science background, I decided I wanted to get a degree in something related to my work, which is why I went to Japan and I got my master's degree in network engineering and uh, IT. That's very significant place, guys, especially in programming and many aspects, because Japanese people, with all respect to all around, they are the best. Do you think so? They're, they're yeah. up there. They're really up there. Along, there are a lot of... I, I, I According to technology. To technology, J Japan is one of the leading countries in the world in terms of te technology. Um, and yes, uh, when it comes to that, I think Japan is in the top three, right up there. So when I went to Japan to study IT and network engineering, I thought I was really making a great career move. So I moved to Japan and I studied uh, my master's over there and of course studying your master's in a Japanese university you have to be well versed in the yes. Japanese language which I am grateful that while I was doing my bachelor's degree I knew a lot of Japanese people and I started learning Japanese from the time that I was in a bachelor's degree position. So cool. Uh, are they uh, working tightly? Full-time working, as we know. Oh, Japanese? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, mm -hmm. they, they take no breaks whatsoever. They're all about working. You, they go to work at 7 in the morning. They leave at, not 7 at night, maybe 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. And it's one of those things that they're, they, they are workaholics to the point where they, those kind of people, they have their own name in Japan, which is salaryman. <laughs> you know, because that's all they do. Now, Michelle, because uh, we learned the fact that you are Saudi, going to all of those different countries, you yourself are an ambassador of Saudi Arabia. Another thing that we have learned that you have always been very interested in the cross-cultural exchange. Yes. Through the cross-cultural exchange definitely comes the language barrier, which you very well fulfilled. So Thank talk you. to us about your 
recognition of learning all of these different languages, starting by the fact that, ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Khalid Asaman actually knows eight languages and he's fluent at every one of them. So let oh. us talk a little bit about your oh journey God. of learning the eight languages. How are you not bilingual but multi multilingual? Octolingual, I think that's what they call it. Octolingual. Yeah, the that's well, precise. I don't know. Um, I, I wish I was as fluent in the eight like I used to be, of course. I don't I don't uh, I don't practice hardly enough. But uh, how do I get there? Basically by meeting people. It's all about meeting people and being interested in the person that you're talking to. Um, the person that you're with. Uh, while I was in the university, like you said, um, I was involved, very, very involved in the international students over there. Many Saudi students, unfortunately, they go abroad and when they go abroad, they they just stay with Saudis and they speak Arabic yes. all the time yes. I and see they it don't. On the yeah, they do not branch out. They do not explore. You are in a foreign. I believe. I honestly believe, and I truly believe in this: is that when you go abroad, you have to go abroad and experience, actually experience the culture, experience the language, experience the other people who are in the same position as you are in. Yes. The Japanese students, Chinese students, uh, Indonesian students who do not speak the language as well as you, learn from them, and by learning from them, you yeah. get a part of their that's, culture. That's a quite significant aspect, because in the international, like in, in uh, the English Association uh, in England, they collect different nationalities from Ukraine, from France, and, and from Arab, from Turkey. They join them together in one class and let them talk and speak one language which is English. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very significant point that you uh, highlighted before because as you said some Saudis and many Saudis that were going there and without they they just stay with Arabs uh, and they don't speak uh, English at all that they they cannot benefit from the language there. Right. So uh, guys we have uh, we continue but we have an amazing short report so enjoy it and we're coming back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and well, that was a fabulous report all the way from Berlin, Germany. Now, with this, we're going to be continuing tonight's discussion, which is all in regards to a Saudi traveling abroad, uh, doing some excellent cross-cultural exchange, learning so much, absorbing so much of the culture, and eventually learning uh, the difference of our Saudi society along with all of those Western societies, and keeping a good balance in his life at the same time. We are in discussion with Michelle Khaled Saman, and uh, we are going to be talking uh, more to you, Michelle. Uh, up till now, we have spoken about your journey uh, in education. Now, currently, you are not in political science nope. or in IT programming. Nope. Tell us what was your third stage in life. Okay. How did that come about? All right. Uh, my third stage in life. Right now, I am an actor, comedian, and um, I do a lot of other things as well. I direct, I write, I uh, produce, I, I'm a photographer, I do a lot of stuff, but now mainly I'm focusing on acting and comedy in uh, Los Angeles, California. That's so cool, man. That's so cool. I, <laughs> I went from the, one one side of the spectrum all the way to the other side of the spectrum. So tell me about the, how did you choose art from uh, away from your, is it because your talent, you like the field, you enjoy it, you want to? I think um, deep down in my heart, I think that I have always been some sort of an entertainer. Since I was in school, I used to do Haflat Madas Riyadh. You know, we used to do all these productions every year and I used to love doing them. So there's always been an artistic side to me. I used to doodle a lot and draw in my, my books. Um, taking notes, of course, taking notes from the class, but on the side, you know, draw all these pictures of the yeah. teacher, you know, like that I did not like and the teachers that I did like. So I think I always had it in me. Uh, the point where I realized that I did not want to do IT anymore was um, I just had no passion for it anymore. Yes, that's I the, had no passion. Quite significant aspect in your role in mm -hmm. life. But uh, are you interested in yes. so, uh, since you meant, you told me in the break that you are doing uh, Shakespearean 
place. Yes. What's a really significant role? This is the first time I know a person from Saudi Arabia doing uh, amazing and significant works from the history of the uh, literature, and especially in England. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the uh, your experience on Shakespearean. Oh, and Shakespearean play. I, to be honest, I hated Shakespeare when I first thought about time. it because. Yes. Amen to that. <laughs> no, it's serious because when you first hear of Shakespeare over here. It's like, it's something, the, the language is so difficult. You learn English in a certain way and then... It's an the, old English. It's the old English. It's actually, whatever English it is, it's, it's the very proper English. How art thou, you know, good, mo good morrow, fine sir. It's yes. almost like when I actually started reading um, Shakespeare, I thought the first thing in my mind when I started to understand it, it's much like our old culture here in Saudi Arabia. The way we properly speak, the way we, we speak with the poetry in, in our words, it, 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 was, it was quite a profound yes. thing that I found. Like here in Saudi Arabia, when we used to speak, how all of our elders and, and our young yes. people used to speak with so much elegance and how yes. they used to speak and how they used to be very classy. Once I made that connection, I loved Shakespeare. I loved anything that Shakespeare did. Uh, the first play that I read was The Merchants of Venice. Shortly after, um, I read Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet and all so, those uh, things. So you roll. And from university. But listen, Michelle, let us continue that, but we've got the picture that oh, I wow. adore the most. So yes. please talk to us a little bit about this picture, oh. the beautiful wall mural. Oh, the, the wall mural. Uh, wow. That, uh, actually, that I did that in Jeddah. Um, this last trip that I came, I was out in Jeddah visiting my friends and family, and I was at my cousin's. Uh, I was at my cousin's uh, house, and we literally, half of the wall was already painted because he had painted part of it because he wanted to express something. I don't know what it is exactly yet. And I told him, it's like, why don't you draw on the, it's nice, it's a big white screen. Why don't you draw something on it? And he's like, like what? And I said, I don't know, something. And I took a pencil. He's like, why don't you do it? And I said, I'm not going to do it, but I'll show you what I mean. Why don't you draw something like this? And it actually started from the very middle with, um, I'm a big Star Wars fan, and I drew a little Darth Vader. And then I drew it, and then he gave me a black marker. I did the black, and then I went and I sat down, and he said, wow, that's really nice. He left the room, and I went and I drew something else, and then I drew something else, and then I drew something else. And then it was and a it whole just universe. turned into a whole universe. And then he kept coming in, and he kept saying, um, I like Spider-Man, so I drew him a Spider-Man. And he said, I love Batman, so I did Batman. I love Batman. <laughs> so it took me about a week and every day he would come in and he would say, why don't you do this? Why don't you draw this? Do you remember this? the Joker from Batman? The, the Joker's it's all there. there. He's he, there. He died, yeah. unfortunately. He got yes. an Oscar after yes. he died. Yes. Now, Michelle, another thing that you have done over here in this particular wall morale mm -hmm. is you have drawn the Kingdom Tower and the Facilia Tower. So yes. in the world of comics, you have added Riyadh in the Ri face. I had to uh, put something in there. Uh, we were in Jeddah, and I remember I did Riyadh. And, um, uh, I, I just, I drew, I, I brought it, if you look at it, science fiction is on the right, there's the Japanese anime is on the complete left, yep. and um, that's actually, that's a very famous uh, word that very many kids here in Saudi Arabia will know that's, that's to be continued in Japanese, that Suzuku in Japanese means to be continued, and every child here that watched Grandaiza or Adnan Molina and all those old uh, Japanese cartoons, that was at the This end. was taken also from Tokyo. This was the beginning of my career when I did children's shows over there, and I did a Amazing. children's play. And this was after the show, and I was uh, signing autographs for the kids who liked Baby Bear so much, and that's what I was. Um, this was uh, this was the thank you to uh, to me. Uh, I was uh, one of the executive producers of this, and this was the cast and crew of the, a play that gave me a thank you, a big thank you uh, at the end. Uh, this was one of my sketches of one Amazing. of uh, Saudi Arabia's oh. greatest cartoons ever known, Grandizer. You, you'll and take take all old, old people now to their childhood. Yeah, of course, this was this was every Saudi's childhood uh, growing up. Um, this was Amazing. I remember this was uh, at uh, 
at an event we were doing and an artist was giving away these little, these small little um, uh, canvases and mm -hmm. they said draw whatever you want. The sketch I did, um, I forgot what the event was but I wanted to portray Saudi Arabia and I just had an idea for a logo and uh, I can't actually remember what I wrote on there. I said, I can't remember what it says. I like oh. And this is my personal oh, okay. favorite. I'm going to be having this framed in my room oh, very thank soon. You. Talk to us about this, Michelle. This is the reason I'm your biggest fan oh, now. Thank oh, thank you so much. Amazing. This was, thank you. Um, this was when I was living in Japan. Um, I was dabbling a lot in 3D. Um, 3D modeling and uh, digital art, I really started getting into it. And being from Saudi Arabia and living in Japan, I wanted to do something that depicted both of them. So, as you can see, I have a big thing for Al Faisali and Al Mamlaka. I love those two buildings. This those clip. Are... This is another one of my favorites where we have two very impressive people. Oh. My <laughs> childhood hero, Batman, and there you go, the new eight Saudi hero. Um, this one, um, I do a thing on Facebook every every Tuesday. I put a new. Uh, cover photo and or cover picture that I do and it's it's very topical so this one was when Batman the new Batman movie was coming out and everything on television they were showing bits and clips of the movie yes. Kalas, I saw the whole thing on TV I want to watch the movie so I drew that picture oh this one was from university days this was uh, the GCC SU which is the Gulf Cooperation what Council a great Student days when you remember them. yes this was Anymore. probably 15, 15 years ago or How something like that. How old you are? I'm old enough to. Uh, I'm old enough to know better. Age is just a number. <laughs> I, play, I play. I play okay. He's Looks a like director. It. These are my classmates, my Japanese uh, language classmates from Tokyo. Carlo. He's uh, from Switzerland and from Taiwan. Uh, these were the Shabab. The Shabab Club. Uh, uh, this was a production meeting at the University of Oregon for International Night, 1998. I was one of the co-producers um, co and co-presidents of that uh, committee, and this was at the university, and we were doing auditions for the uh, cultural uh, shows and the cultural displays that we were going to do at the university. So that's me in the middle. Uh, this, we're bouncing back, oh, <laughs> this is in Japan. Uh, this was my uh, second year doing my master's, my final year at the master's degree. Wow, this is going back to 1993, my freshman year in college. And this was uh, the international <coughs> students um, trip um, that we took to get to know one another. And there were, there are a couple of Saudis in there, people from Vietnam, Japan, Japan. let's see, we got Taiwan in there, Hong Kong. They, these were all the international students. These were the first people that I met when I actually went to, uh, to uh, the States and uh, went to college. And I remember most all of those. And then uh, many, many years later in 2007, this is graduation from, uh, from uh, Japanese University. And that's one of my uh, classmates uh, from Waseda University in Tokyo. And well, with that, it is a wrap to all of the amazing photographs from the life and Thank the journey you. of education of uh, Michelle. Now, we have learned one thing, which is for sure, that as soon as you go ahead abroad to another country, it's not only important for you to fulfill your aim and your ambition, but it's also extremely important for us to absorb their culture and try and not take from them everything, but then again absorb a bit of it in order to accumulate that with your own culture. Because we see that even in the photographs, Michel never forgot the fact of his roots. He never forgot where he belongs. He is still a Saudi, mashallah, very proud Saudi, but at the same time he has learned so much. So now, Michelle, that we have seen a bit and bits and pieces of your life, yeah. talk to us a little bit about your acting career as per now. We have seen your past. Let's talk about <laughs> the current present. Wow. Your, your performances uh, and all that, all of the glamour in your life now. Okay. Um, about two years ago, I moved to uh, I moved to back to the states and I went to Los Angeles, and um, I had started an acting career in Tokyo, in Japan, and I was doing pretty well over there. And um, I was basically pushed 
to go in a very good way to go to Los Angeles and I did go to Los Angeles and I took acting classes while I was over there and while I was taking acting classes of course met directors and producers and other actors and started falling in love with acting itself acting as an art and I started realizing acting was nothing that I imagined it to be uh, especially learning it from great people so while I was over there I also um, ran into a school, a comedy school um, called Second City and that is a very very old and prestigious um, comedy troupe and school that's been around since 1959 so and all the greats from Saturday Night Live came out of that school and from that theater and I decided to take classes over there and learn the art of comedy and the art of comedy is actually the hardest art yes it's much harder than drama it's hard to make people laugh it's hard because you need timing and you need you need everything uh, to go just right in order to do it and I found a real love for that and a real interest in that because I believe also that the best way to keep a person um, happy. happy also is to um, make them smile and make them laugh as well you know so when you do that also it's it's just really really great and I just you could just tell that I, I love it I, I love it's, everything it's about really comedy. It's really a great a it role is. in life but uh, some of the comedies they called the uh, stupid comedy because they are imitating sometimes doing stupid. Th that can be its own genre of comedy but like you said it's really hard to do like fresh new ideas you know as we see it's it's really it's a really really it's a it's almost as complicated as mathematics Right. And it, that's, that's a and very good point. And when I started taking improv comedy at Second City, that's one of the things that I found out that the basis of comedy is the reality of a situation. Every situation can become funny. You just have to find it, play the game, and heighten it. And to the point where I loved it so much that in Hollywood right now, every Sunday night, I produce my own comedy show and we bring students, uh, uh, students of this form to come and perform 20 minutes and it goes from 8 o'clock at night until 1 o'clock in the morning sometimes where we just Amazing. have so many people there and you never know who you meet in these, in these um, functions because it's just such a fantastic community that you can you never know you perform with another improviser and tomorrow that improviser becomes Stephen Colbert or Steve Corral you know these the Tina Fey um, Dan Aykroyd these are all people from Second City that you never know they become great because they study what they love and yes. I believe anybody who goes outside don't don't be an actor, don't be a comedian, be what you want to be. Yes, yes. And once you find the passion to what you want to be and you know who you are, oh, you can do amazing things. And I sometimes just regret that it took me this long to figure out what I truly love. And with that amazing piece of advice, we're going to be holding the thought and remembering that there's just not what you are hearing right now. It's very important for you all to listen as well. For the moment, let us go down to the trip of Madain Saleh, where myself and my beautiful sister, Saima Aziz, are going to be showing you bits and pieces of the beautiful World Heritage site of Madain Saleh. So let us see, learn a little bit about our amazing trip, and we're going to be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and well, we took you to a free ride all the way to Madain Saleh, the World Heritage Site, one of the most 
beautiful regions in the entire world. We can very easily say Madi uh, Madain Sal is very close to uh, Medina Al Munawwara. It is within the region of Medina Al Munawwara. It is definitely a must see site. Now, there in the report, we were actually very much uh, delighted to be accompanied by 130 diplomats with their families as well. It was a trip organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, on that note, we would definitely like to extend our greetings to His Excellency Mr. Alauddin Al Askari uh, for all of the amazing, amazing support that he and his entire team did in order to really make that trip a success. Another man who had a huge role in uh, the great trip was definitely His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Salman, who actually gave us a surprise visit in Madain Saleh, as you just saw, where he came and visited us as the, at the Farid Port, which was yet another great time for us to uh, spend with His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Salman, a true heritage hero, a person who has never forgotten his roots and really carries on with the flag of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, wherever it is that he goes. Now with this, we are going to be coming back to reality, back to the studio right here with Michelle. Now, Michelle, uh, we see that you know you have toured around the world a lot. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about you taking Saudi Arabia with you, wherever it is that you have gone. We see it in your work, we see it in your talks, we yes. even see it in your beautiful drawings. Yes. How is it that you. you have, in all these years, mashallah, managed to not forget your true identity and still manage to show people what real Saudi Arabia is, which is just not camels and oil? Right. Well, uh, that's that's actually a very hard question to answer because um, it's 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 hard to say it's hard to say that I forget that I am Saudi. I have a Saudi name, <laughs> so it's hard for me to say, "Oh, my name is Mishal," and people go like, "Oh, where is that from?" Saudi Arabia, you know. And people, like you say, they always think that you know, yes, you're just nothing but sand and oil. And it's like, no. Do you have an oil well? No, I don't have an oil well. I have two oil wells. How do you answer that? You have to. Yes, you have to funny. find a clever way to find who you are and what your root is. So I will never forget that I'm from Saudi Arabia. Uh, any chance I get to say that I'm from Saudi Arabia, I say I'm from Saudi Arabia. We we're all proud of being Saudi. Yes, you know, no matter true. what no matter what happens in the world, at the end of the day, we are always going to be proud of being Saudi. I'm always proud of being Saudi and you I are a, like I a said, great example of demonstrating the country in a very elegant and very very respectful and Thank very you. important way that you are really dis, uh, uh, reflecting the culture of the country. Thank you very uh, much. We are really proud of these Thank guys, uh, these uh, people who are really uh, doing, uh, achieving thing, things uh, abroad overseas. But we're really great about you coming back to the country and achieving things in the country, especially yeah. people like you. You never know. It could <laughs> be. It could be on the horizon. I am very proud of the steps and the strides that Saudi Arabia has taken, especially the young people. The young people here, the new generation, are fantastic. This is one of the reasons I stayed longer this time. I see all these artists and all these actors and comedians right now here in Saudi Arabia, and I, I have nothing to say, but I give the thumbs up. And yeah. on that fabulous message, Michelle, we would really like to thank you for joining us, giving us this beautiful hour of pure entertainment. We were delighted by your journey. Has it been an hour already? Thank you so <laughs> yes. much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. And well, with this, ladies and gentlemen, joining us in the program was the amazing personality, somebody that I have truly, truly been admiring lately, is uh, Mr. Michelle Khaled Saman, who uh, is definitely an inspiration for us all, not because he has traveled all across the world, but because he has taken his roots all across the world and he has represented the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the best of the lights, while while making an academic career at the same time. We wish you all the very best, Michelle. And for all of you, do join us tomorrow whenever it is that we are going to be going on air. We hope that you're going to be sending us your feedback. Till we see you again, do take care of yourselves and good night.